Hello and welcome to Region Order DSQ. I'm Munda Hookins and my review of the Swedish Tier 1 light tank, the STRV FM-21. So, is this tank any good? Yeah, it's a good tank. I like it. Um, I haven't played World of Tanks for 15 months, just getting back into it, so I thought I'd start at Tier 1. And hey, I like the Swedish people, so I thought I'd try the Swedish tank, and it's pretty good. Now, the tank has no armour. In fact, the armour is rubbish at 14mm all round. Uh, but I still kind of like the tank, you just can't drive it out in the open. Now, a unique feature of this tank, or fairly unique at Tier 1, is it has... Actually, no, there's quite a few rear-mounted tanks at, at, uh, <laughs> in Tier 1, now I think of it. Anyway, this one has a rear-mounted turret. Now, you need to play rear-mounted turrets differently to the way you play mid- or forward-mounted turrets. To give you an idea, this is the Czechoslovakian Tier 1 tank, and it has a forward-mounted turret. By forward, I mean, if we take the centre of the tank, which I guess to be about here, you will see that the centre of the turret is forward of that point. Centre of the turret's here. So it's a forward mounted turret. Forward mounted turrets tend to be good at hill fighting. So you're driving up a hill, the first thing the enemy sees is the tip of your turret and then your gun. So you can shoot at people and only be showing them the top of your turret. Very good means you can drive up, take a shot and back down the corner again quickly. Not much of your tank gets exposed and it's good for hill fighting. So long as the gun depression is also reasonably good, that's how it works. With a rear-mounted uh, jobby like this, if you drive up a hill, you are basically going to have the front of your tank cresting the hill before your turret or your gun does, which means you're showing the enemy part of your tank without being able to shoot at them. So you generally cop a shot, by the time you get in range, you fire a shot, and then as you're backing back down again, you get shot again. The way to counter that is to drive backwards, but it's a bit hard on hills because driving backwards up hills tends to be very slow, especially in a Tier 1 tank. Uh, so it tends not to get done that much on a hill, but you can do that in a pinch. However, uh, great for fighting around corners, and the reason being is what you need to do is drive backwards, so if there's a wall, say the wall's here, you only show from your gun, so your gun would be pointing out the side here, and back. So you're back around the corner, just showing this part of your tank here, about up to where this, uh, or just a little bit past this Swedish flag, and that's where your gun would be you take a shot and then you drive back again. Now the reason it's an advantage in a remounted turret is because tanks drive faster forward than they do backwards. So you can back out, uh, okay, a little bit slower, but you're generally not spotted at that stage. That gives you a chance to back out, start aiming at the tank that you want to shoot, and then fire your shot, and then the other tank is aiming at you and trying to get its aim in. You drive off forwards, which is very, very quick, especially at T1 when there's long aiming times. Uh, on some of the tanks, or poor accuracy, and you find that you won't get hit very much. Now, it, as an added bonus, if it also happens to be some rocks around that corner, and you can actually back out and just show the tip of your turret and have none of the uh, tank sticking out past the rock, you become very, very difficult to hit, and you can uh, do pretty well in these sort of tanks. So that's the advantage of them. If you haven't played water tanks before and you're not sure, uh, that's how to use this, especially this tank with really bad armor. Don't drive it out in the open. You'll get slaughtered, especially by tanks that have multi-fire cannons, because, uh, yeah, they can do a lot of damage very quickly. So if we have a quick look at the only two things you can choose from this tank are two different guns. We have the 37mm cannon, which is the gun you start with. A 23.1 rate of fire, which is pretty darn quick. Um, it has 33 penetration and does 40 damage per shot. That's really good damage per shot. Uh, the I think the borderline on tier 1 is 29mm, so anything that has below 29 millimeters of penetration struggles a little bit. Anything with over 29 millimeters of penetration tends to do all right. So this has 33, so it will do all right. And 40 uh, damage is really good for tier one, especially with that rate of fire. 44 accuracy is pretty bad, but everybody has bad accuracy at tier one. And 1.96 aim time is good. So you can pop out, aim quickly, take the shot, pop back, which is what this tank excels at. This particular one here though is a multi-fire gun. It's pretty much a machine gun has uh, 10 shells in the magazine, which it takes 8 seconds to reload, which is a long time. So if you're at close range with tanks, just make sure they can't pop back around a corner and shoot back at you, because uh, they'll know that you're taking a long time to reload, and they'll just drive around a corner and shoot you. Uh, 0.3 of a second between each shell. So it fires all, three, uh, all 10 shells in about 3 seconds, which is pretty fast. Um, the 27 millimeters of penetration is below the 29 mils uh, borderline mark in tier one, so there will be quite a few tanks that can't penetrate. For example, the Renault Otsu uh, can't even penetrate the side of a Renault Otsu. 
uh, could probably penetrate the rear, but that's about it. Uh, even tanks, tanks like the L tractor or the MS, MS probably can't penetrate from the front. The L tractor has trouble penetrating the turret, but can penetrate the hull. So B, you've got to, with this gun, you kind of need to know where to aim. And it has 0.5 accuracy, which is terrible. So even if you know where to aim, chances are you're going to miss that spot. Uh, 2.5 second aim time is also quite slow. So if all 10 shells penetrate, you can do 120 damage, which will pretty much kill a lot of tier one tanks. However, getting them all to hit and getting them all to penetrate is a lot more difficult. So I prefer the 37 millimeter. With all that said, I don't think there's much more to tell you. It's a tier one tank, you won't have it for that long anyway. So let's have a look at some gameplay and uh, see what you think about the tank. Um, one thing important to note if you are a beginner, camouflage note, net, toolkit and uh, binocular telescope are the three things you should buy as soon as you can. Why? Because you can take these and move them onto your next tank. So when you finish with this tank, another tank, you can move these to your next tank free of charge. Just take them on off any tank anytime you want. So you really only need one set of these for your whole life in order of tanks if that's what you want to do. However, the other modules such as gun lane drives and all that sort of stuff are kind of like a permanent fixture to the tank once you put them on. To get them off will actually cost you gold, and gold is real money in this game. So if you want to, you're going to be spending real money. If you don't care about that, you've got plenty of money, then it doesn't matter. But if you're someone who watches your pennies a little bit, then use these three because you put them on any tank. The other ones you have to pay money, and really you don't want to be paying gold on tier one, two, three, or even tier four tanks. Uh, yeah, if you want to remove stuff, you pretty much want to buy them and leave them on the tank because you'll probably play it more. But these early tanks, you probably don't want to be have gold invested in them. So I tend to say just uh, get these three. You can swap them on any tank. Also, uh, with these tier ones, uh, I've found AP ammo is good. HE ammunition is absolutely useless. I do try it out. Um, I think with the heavier gun in one of the games, I actually shoot a guy, and you'll see it only does two points of damage and the tank was lightly armored. So if it's doing two points of damage against a lightly armored opponent, it probably does nothing against heavily armored opponents. So HE is pretty much a waste of time on either of the guns for this tank. All right, uh, and I don't, I never use premium ammunition, just my personal choice. So uh, AP is the way to go, I think. Let's get into some gameplay. All right, so in this game we have the Multi-fire cannon, the one that has 10 rounds in a clip and takes 8 seconds to reload. Uh, guns loaded. Now I'm going over this side of the map because I just figure this tank uh, is a good tank to uh, use on this little uh, hole in the rock, I guess you could call it. Now the T1, as you can see there, is a much faster tank than this one. and He's going to try and race around the outside from the look of it. Uh, what he's doing and what I am doing are both viable tactics when you have 15 aside. But in this game there's only 7 aside, so it's a bit of a chance, you take a chance on which way the enemy is going to go. And uh, once I get him and get him in position, you'll see what I'm doing. I'm backing up and I'm just exposing the top of my turret so that when they come around that corner there and try and go through there, they've got really not much at all to shoot at me and I should be able to put holes in them. And I'm aiming, uh, I try and aim this side of the gap, even though they're going to come from the other side because a lot of time what happens is they start racing across that gap. And by the time you spot them, they're actually almost across. So if you pre-aim uh, you know, halfway or almost all the way across, you get a much better chance of hitting them. However, once the tanks become spotted here in a minute, you can see we've got a Renault O2 going straight down there. Now, he doesn't care because he's got great armor. So he's just driving out there. Saying, yeah, shoot at me if you want. I don't care. I'm going to bounce your shots. You can be a bit of a bully in the Renault O2. You can't be in this tank, that's for sure. Now, as people start to become spotted, I realize I look across and there's nobody on the other side of the grid of this town. So I'm not talking about going right up top. I'm just talking about where you can see the other STRV on the enemy team has been spotted now. That's, uh, we call that Tank Alley. And Tank Alley is uh, normally full of tanks, but none of our team is down there, which means the enemy team is probably going to push through there and not have much opposition. So I decide to start uh, moving up on this side because it means, uh, having so few tanks means there's, if they're all up that side, none of them are over here, so I can start moving up. As I'm moving here, I notice, uh, I thought I had a shot there, but I didn't, so I'm just double checking. I'm trying to see if any of the tanks here have to be out in the open, and I wasn't concentrating on my steering, and I went the wrong way for a second. And I thought I could see this guy through a window or something. I'm just trying to find it, but now he's moved. So just checking to see, oh, I had a red outline there. So I'm going to keep going to the next building, see if we can get a shot on this guy. It's an old tractor. 
The turret on the old tractor is pretty good from recollection, but the body is weak. So, yeah, we're getting a couple of pens there. But we even bounced, even bounced off the side of an old tractor. That's how weak this gun is. But I'm going to use backing out, so I'm not exposing much of my tank. He is now hiding behind the fountain. But we've got tanks moving up, which are going to put him under pressure. He's probably going to have to move. He's getting shot from up high now. He's had to come out. We penetrated with some of those shots, but not all of them. I'm just pulling back in cover while I reload. Pretty long reload. Getting ready now. He's under all sorts of pressure, and he's dead. And then I realize, oh, this other tank is out in the open. So pull back. It's an STRV just like us, so we can put holes in it. And he's gone back around. Unfortunately, it was out in the open. So now I'm thinking, oh, maybe one of them will pull back because we've got our Renault Oats who's there. Very difficult tank to deal with. So they may try and run. And I think if they try and run, I'm about to get a shot on them here. So I'm just waiting. Here it comes. And we managed to wipe him out. 75 damage we did there in total. So as you can see, the armor, that was the same tank as this. So the armor is rubbish. Even this uh, multi cannon gun, just uh, every shot penetrates. So. Don't get in front of a multi-cannon with this gun. Oh, with this tank. No armor at all. I'm trying to get to the uh, middle now. Well, they've only got one tank left. Um, hasn't been spotted yet. I'm heading towards Cap because I figure... Oh, there it is. The, the enemy tank is over there. It's an L tractor. Has no armor. Uh, our Renault Oats is there. So that L tractor is finished. I, yeah, I don't get there in time. Okay. Okay, so a fairly unremarkable game, but it shows, I guess, uh, how that gun works and how the tank moves and all that sort of stuff. It's a bit tough when they don't have many uh, tanks in a game, but unfortunately, um, just wasn't a lot of people playing, obviously, when I was playing. Uh, next screen. So we did okay. We did 109 damage. Any time, I think any time we tanks, you do more damage than your tank has hit points. You've had a good game. So we had a good game. Uh, next screen, we fired 30 rounds, only 40, 14 of them hit, so accuracy isn't great. 10 of the 14 penetrated, so we were in luck there, though fairly soft targets we're shooting at. 109 damage, damage two tanks, destroying one, and yeah, there you go. And the final screen, oh, we've already seen the final screen. Yeah, that's it. Next game. Okay, so... Um same map, Himmelsdorf, except this time we're on the other side of the map. Uh, I started on this side, so I decide to um, head up this way. I'm not going to go to the side because, like in the last game, with only seven tanks per side, not many people seem to go that way, so I'm just going to go straight up the middle and uh, see how we go. As a general rule, when you're a beginner, going up the middle is not a good idea in any uh, multiplayer game because going up the middle... Uh, exposes you to fire from two flanks. So I need to I need usually go up the middle on these sort of games. You have a little bit of experience. Normally it's safe for most games, multiplayer games, is to hang near the edges. This guy here is obviously a new player. He's sitting right out in the open. Terrible accuracy. That fully aimed shot missed. Now we hit him. He is indeed an STRV. Exact same tank as us. We bounced the shot. I don't know how we bounced. He manages to escape though, so he's not silly, he worked out to go. We bounce another shot, I think it actually bounced off the STRV. This shot hits the MS-1. MS-1 I think has pretty good tank uh, armor, so front on, but it's terrible from the sides. I think that's how the MS-1 works. From recollection, it has been 15 months since I played. Just trying to see if this guy is sticking out through that hole there, but he's not. Uh, he came back, the MS-1, he snuck past, I, didn't get, I missed him. Wasn't looking. I think he's going to come out again, is he? Don't come out. Oh, there's an L tractor. We get a good shot into him. I know that it was an L tractor. It was the STRV. We bounce off the side of the MS-1. I think we hit his frontal armor there, which is pretty strong. He's staying there for far too long. If you're under fire like that and you're getting hit, just run. Right? Even if you're aiming, run. Now we get good shots on this STRV here. He takes a shot at us, but really, oh, he was very lucky then we bounced. I did take a hit from him, though, but it was only 10 points, so I think he's firing the multi-cannon. Waiting for him to come out again. Oh, that was a big hit. I got hit for a big hit by 33. I'm running. I think I just fired and killed that other tank, though. And I got, there was, I'm got. i pretty sure it was from on top of the hill there where this guy is. It wasn't an MS-1 that hit me, though. It said L tractor when I got hit. So I'm not sure if it was him that hit me. But I decide now I want to get a better shot on this guy. So I have to back out and see if there's someone else there. 
Have I got a shot on this guy? Oh, I've got a shot on somebody. MS1. Nice. 42 points. He gets away from that one. Good reload. Pretty quick reload on this gun. If it was accurate, if this gun was accurate, it'd be a really bit of a beast of a tank, so long as it had cover. Always keeping map awareness and making sure that someone hasn't been spotted from a different place that can hit you. I decide now I might have to drive up on this ridge here to see if I can get a shot on these guys. I want to try and get a bit more height because they've only got three tanks left and I know two of them are up on that hill. So if I can get in a spot where I can actually hit them, we may be able to uh, get some sneaky shots on them without them realising. Here we go. Oh, don't get away, don't go away. Oh, he got away. And this guy has the very tip of his turret showing. Sometimes very hard to hit, but sometimes when it's like that, a HE shell can like, HE shells go higher. So I changed to HE. And we hit him, two points of damage. Total waste of time. So I'm switching back now to normal shells. So what I was saying, HE shells, because they travel slower, uh, to reach their target, they have to go higher. Well, I'm pretty sure that hit him. That missed, hit the wall. That hit him. Yeah, and because the shells have to go higher, uh, if you can only see the tip, very tip of a turret over a wall, uh, you've got a better chance of shooting them with a HE shell, because, as long as you can you know, see their tank, because the shell will go higher, and it's more likely to sort of come down on the tank, so you actually have a larger target area when you're shooting with a HE shell. But at this tier, tier 1, the HE shells... Uh, especially for this tank, are utterly useless, as you saw there. That, that wasn't a well-armoured tank we were shooting at, and it only did two points of damage. So, uh, And this is the big gun, so yeah, totally useless. Oh, game's over. So, moving on to the stats. A uh, bit more excitement in that game. Uh, we killed a couple of tanks, hit, got quite a few hits in, so a bit more fun. Hopefully, I demonstrated a little bit about you know, backing up and stuff like that. We didn't really get into those backing up uh, sort of fights that much, but you can see that most of my tank, pretty much only my turret was showing, and if the enemy has multiple targets to shoot at, and you only have a tiny bit of your tank showing, they're more likely to shoot at somebody else. So a tier one especially, good tactics. So we actually finished on top four XP, so we did pretty good, and we did what, 351 damage? Uh, we did most of the damage on our team. Next best was one of these guys at 158. So I'm pretty happy with that. And we fired 26 shots. I'm surprised. So the reload speed's pretty good in this thing. Only 14 of them hit, which uh, kind of shows that the accuracy was pretty bad. Some of those fully aimed shots were missing, was terrible, and hitting the wrong parts of the tank and stuff like that. I'm used to Armored Warfare now, and Armored Warfare... It's almost impossible to miss a tank, uh, unless it's moving quickly or something. Anyway, 14 out of 11, 351 damage. Uh, oh, more than 300 metres, 135. That would have been the people on the top of the hill, I think. Uh, we received a couple of hits. And uh, damage 4 destroying 2. And yeah, that's it. Not bad income for a tank like that, considering we don't have uh, a premium account. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching my review of the Swedish Tier 1 STRV FM-21. I hope you enjoyed the review, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more reviews, please subscribe to Reginald ESQ. Have fun.